Well, this looks like the right place for the gardens of the great philosopher, Hermocrates. But, mistress, we do not know anyone. Won't they find it weird if we are found here? Well, should someone ask, we will introduce ourselves as young scholars who have come to learn from the philosopher. Besides, the gate was unlocked. Now, before we are discovered, let me tell you why we are Wait, here. Wait, I would like to understand a few things before you begin. As you wish. First, you leave your courts and travel to one of your country estates with only me and a couple of your servants to accompany you. Correct. Soon after we arrive, you produce two portraits. One of a man and one of a woman, both quite attractive and older than you, and ask me to make miniature copies of well, them. that is true, but what did you not? I am not finished. Once the copies are complete, you tell your servants you are ill and lock us in a room, telling me we are to be dressed as men, and you are to be known as Falchion and I as Ermi Doss. Then we slip sneakily away on foot. Now here we are in the garden of Hermocrates, whose philosophy I can hardly imagine you have any use for. You may be surprised. And for what? Why the portraits? Who are this man and this woman? What do you want from me? What could you possibly want from Hermocrates? Tell me quickly. If you are quite finished, I will tell you. Well, as you know, I rule these lands as Princess Leonid, occupying the throne that my uncle Leonidas usurped from Prince Leonidas. Yes, yes, yes. I know all that. And... When he died without an heir, on his deathbed, your your father became prince, and on his deathbed, you became princess. But what does that have to do Wait. with all of it? There is more to the story. Look, years before, when my father and uncle were away at war, Prince Cleomenes fell in love with my uncle's wife, Merida. When my uncle returned, discovered the prince with Merida, and had them imprisoned. Then he usurped the throne. Prince Cleomenes died soon after, and six months later, while still in prison, Merida gave birth to a tiny prince. It has been believed that the prince died in prison, but I have since discovered he is alive. Well, I learned from a servant of this place that he was secreted away and entrusted to the philosopher Hermocrates and his sister, Leontide. He has been raised here since childhood, hidden from the world. If this is true, then you must protect your position. I intend to do exactly the opposite. What? Have you taken leave of your wit? I have seen him, Karine. His name is Agis. He and Hermocrates walk these gardens daily, and I secretly traveled here a week ago, hid behind some bushes, and observed the prince reading under a nearby tree. <laughs> well, until then, I had heard of love, but I only knew it by its name. I had no idea of its true meaning. Well, Imagine an assemblage of all the most beautiful and noblest graces, and you will still fall short of the face, charm, and figure of a genius. Now I understand your desire to travel to one of your country estates. Wait, there is more. Well, just as I was leaving, Hermocrates spotted me and approached. He did not recognize me and asked if the princess ever walked in the forest nearby. I was flustered and told him that the princess did indeed have an estate nearby, and she sometimes walked in the area. And then I rushed home. <laughs> what an adventure! My pretended illness to be free to come here. Disguised as Fossion, the young scholar who wishes to learn from the philosopher. Well, in this guise, I hope to have time with Agis, for I'm inspired by love and justice. So you wish to tell him the truth and give over your throne to him? <laughs> I hope to win him over, and perhaps, if he finds a liking in me, we could rule together. But he must not know who I really am, for I'm certain he has been taught to hate me. This will not be an easy endeavor. What if Hermocrates recognizes you? I have a plan, if necessary, from which all his wisdom cannot save him. I mean to get close with Agis, but I need time for that, and I will get it at the expense of Hermocrates, if necessary. And what of the sister? By the looks of her portrait, she seems very stern. Will she consent to have a handsome young stranger staying here? If she gets in the way, I will show her no more mercy than I would her brother. Doesn't the idea of deceiving them gnaw at your conscience? It disgusts me, but Hermocrates and Leontine are deserving of my treatment. Well, for years they have instilled a geese with aversion towards me and painted me in the most odious guise without knowing my true nature. They have raised enemies that I have fought, all because I inherited a usurped throne. But I am not the usurper. Well, and besides, who could I have returned the throne to? The rightful heir has been hidden from me. No, Karine, my conscience is clear. What is to be my role in all of this, and what of the portrait? Well, for the time being, follow my lead, behave as a young scholar, and try not to look surprised. 
When you need to know more, I will tell you. And take care of those portraits. I'll tell you more how we may need them later. <laughs> Who are these two rascals? This will not be an easy disguise, Mistress, for our figures. What's this? Your figures? What about your figures? Oh, speak, gentlemen. Or are you, in fact, women? Heavens! Save heaven. oh. ah, ah, ah. Do not run away before we reach an understanding. I first took you for scoundrels, but now I see you are scoundrels. Well, we are lost. No, mistress, let me take care of this. Look at his boyish face. He is easily treatable. And besides that, I am honest and never let contraband pass. So you are a commodity I will stop. I will toss you out and bar the gates. And I will stop you from doing so, for you will be the first to repent of any harm if we were thrown out. Prove my repentance, and I will allow you to proceed. My friend, here is the beginning of your proof. Well, would you not be sorry to miss more of that? <laughs> I am certainly comfortable enough to have it. Well, and now will you allow us to proceed? I am beginning to consider it. Help him make up his mind. Will that decide you? <sighs> that most definitely marks the end of my bad mood. <laughs> But what is your intention, liberal ladies? Only a trifle. My mistress here observed a geese reading in the garden and lost her heart to him. <laughs> that sounds honest enough. And being of an age to marry, she hopes to win him over to her feelings. <laughs> Even more honest. But you'll need conversation and time to work him over to her sensitivity. Ha, ah, so she needs access to the house and its amenities. Yes, but if she appears dressed as a woman, Ermocrates will not allow it. And Ajis might flee himself due to the education against women he has received from the philosopher. This is certainly no home to love. Ajis, Ermocrates, and Leontine are as uncivil toward love as any in the world. I, however, have a little know-how. Uh, and now you see why I have taken to dressing as a man. There really is no harm in it. Oh, there is nothing so reasonable. Mademoiselle fell in love with Agis. So what? Everyone takes what they can get. That is the way of the world. Uh, come, gracious ladies. I wish you good luck and offer you my service as well as my heart that I will gladly give away. I promise you, <laughs> helping us will soon make you the envy of all. But remember, I am to be known as Fosion, and Karit, my companion, is to be Ermidas. And a juice must not find out who we really are. Have no fear, Monsieur Fosion. Welcome, Brother Hermidas. That is how I shall speak henceforth. No. Hush, someone is coming. With whom do you speak, my friend? Uh, two people. I can see that, you cabbage. Who are they, and what do they want? We came to speak with the philosopher. Well, this is certainly not the way in. Hermocrates forbids strangers from wandering his garden. You need to turn yourselves around, go out the way you came in, and knock at the front gate. But we found the gate open. Well, aren't strangers allowed to make a mistake? Not in these gardens. An open gate is hardly an invitation to walk through. You should have had the decency to request the privilege from the gardener. Gently, my friend, you are speaking to a rich and important person. I can see that he is rich. He is important and I am only the gardener. Therefore, he must knock by the front gate. Who are you shouting at, Damas? These youths who think they can tromp through our gardens. Uh, we came to greet Lord Hermocrates and speak with him. The gate was open, so we came in, and now he wants us out. Damas, relent and withdraw. Please notify Leontine that a visitor, worthy of consideration even yours, would like to speak with Hermocrates. What difference does my opinion make? I'm only the gardener. <laughs> I ask your forgiveness of the rustic welcome of the gardener. 
Hermocrates himself will apologize to you both, for clearly you are of a bearing and look that demands respect. Indeed, they make a fine pair of faces. If the gardener treated us abruptly, your courtesies compensate us. And if our looks speak well for us, then they have done us great service. They have indeed, for we have only just met. I assure you I cannot be more favorably drawn toward anyone than I am towards you. <laughs> we all could make quite a happy quartet. <laughs> Perhaps. Let us take a walk about the garden, for we have much to discuss. May I ask to whom my friendship is declared? To someone who would gladly swear an eternal friendship in return. I fear I'm making a friend I will lose too soon. What do you wish with Hermocrates? His reputation attracted me here. I want to spend some time in his company, but since meeting you, my motive yields to an even more pressing one. Well, to see you as much as possible. And then what? I do not know. Uh, you must decide. I will consult only you. I would advise you never to lose sight of me. I wish that with all my heart. Well, then we shall always remain together. <laughs> my mistress is advancing with a serious look I do not like at all. <laughs> this, madam, is the little swallow of whom I was speaking, and that little starling is with him. I was told you wished to speak with Hermocrates. He is not here at present. May I relay your message to him? It is no secret, madame, that I have a favor to ask of him. However, you may grant it yourself. Explain, sir. Uh, my name is Fossion, madame. I was named for my father, who was well known for his honest reputation. Unfortunately, he died several years ago. Alone and independent, I've been traveling for some time to form my heart and mind. And trample others' gardens. Hush, you buffoon! I have visited those whose knowledge and virtue have distinguished them from other men. Some allowed me to live with them for a time, and I hope the illustrious Hermocrates would grant the same honor. You certainly look worthy of such consideration. However, I am afraid it will be impossible for Hermocrates to grant your request, for reasons of which Agis is aware. We do not lack for room. I would be happy to house one of them in my room. Quiet, you slug. Agis, you know that we have made a necessary vow not to share our retreat with anyone. Surely will not violate our vow to accept the friend of virtue. I cannot change my ruling on this matter. What a tough bird. Hush, weed. <laughs> what? Will you be so inflexible with such honest intentions as mine? Yes, despite myself. Hermocrates will relent your decision, madame. I am certain he will remain firm. Madame, I withdraw my suit. And may yet may I request a private audience with you before I retire. I am annoyed by your continued unnecessary efforts, but since you request it, I consent. Please, all of you, withdraw for the moment. Oh, may love thwart my artifice. Madame, since you cannot grant my request, I will press it no further. And yet, I do hope that you could grant me some advice that could change the course of my future. The only advice I can give you is to wait for Hermocrates. He is much better suited to assist you. No, madame! On this occasion, you are my preference. But I need reason that is compassionate, or not austere, and character of heart that tempers severity with indulgence. In women is this mixture found more often than in men. So I beseech you, please hear me out. I do not know where this may lead, but your status requires some consideration, so I will listen. Recently, I spied a lady walking who did not see me. Shall I describe her for you? Her size, without being large, was majestic, with well, such a fine and noble air. The tenderest graces allied themselves with the most beautiful and austere. One could not help but love her, oh, but timidly, as if frightened of the respect she merits. <laughs> she is young, but not of that dizzy youth, which has always displeased me. No, her age presents grace in all their strength. The beauty of her soul, adding to her features a ray of finesse, a result of all that she has learned from life. I do not know of whom you speak, sir. This lady is unknown to me, and it is probably too flattering a portrait. The portrait I keep in my heart is a thousand times more lovely than I have painted for you, madame. 
while she spoke to someone, smiled from time to time. And I observed in her a sweet, generous nature that pierced through her serious and modest bearing. Who could he be referring to? Well, she soon retired, and I inquired after her immediately, learning that she is the sister of a respected philosopher. Oh, am I dreaming? <laughs> she is unmarried and lives with him in an innocent retreat, which he refers to the tumult of the outside world. Upon learning this, my reason, as well as my heart, give way to her forever. But please excuse me from listening to the rest. I do not know what love is and would advise you poorly on what I do not understand. I have no wish to distress you, madame. The love I bear does not defile the soul, but honors it. For my heart is in love with her virtue and sympathizes with the beauty of her soul. I am sorry, but I cannot hear more. Propriety dictates that I must leave you. We have been alone together for too long, and my brother uh, awaits. Uh, please, wait. When I arrived, I wished to speak to your brother, but he was absent, and I found you, whom I have vainly begged to support my request, but whose absence now puts me in despair. Imagine, madame, if you with a trembling, confused heart you see before you now. Everything is denied me, madame, and in this, this damned state I throw myself at your feet, entrusting you with my complaint. What are you doing, sir? You forget yourself. I implore your help. The opinions of the gods are in your heart. Believe what inspires you. My heart, the heavens! Why should I consult the enemy of my tranquility? Ah. Oh. Fusion, you say you love virtue, but what are your plans concerning me? I dedicate my life to you, while I aspire to be united with yours. <laughs> well, allow me a few days here. It's now the only thing I ask, and if you grant it, I'm sure Hermocrates will agree. I'd like to stay. Do you want me to lose my respect? What you propose is inconceivable to me. Do you want me to lose my reason? I have never loved, and you are young, attractive, and worthy of love. Well, I am none of those things. Oh, do not say so, madame. I admit nature did grant me some little beauty and charm in my youth, but I have never relied on that, and now you make me regret that I did not, but the little I have left will soon fade. Well, you cannot convince me what I see is not there. You have never been more lovely. I am not what I was. Let us not argue the point. All souls are the same age. You know what I am asking of you. I will press Hermocrates if necessary, and I will die of pain if you do not support my request. My mind is in turmoil, and here comes Hermocrates! Is this the young scholar to whom you were referring? He... I had the honor of speaking with him first, and gave him your compliments, my lord. Uh, Hermocrates, before you, you see the son of the illustrious Phocion, with whom you are acquainted. He bears his late father's name, loves wisdom, and travels to learn. He requests that you receive him in your home with an eagerness that requires some consideration. I promise to commit you to it, or at least to try, and now I must leave you. <laughs> if my desire is worth anything, I'd join him with that of Leontine. And I add my voice on top of that. What do I see? I hope you observe my deep respect for you. I thank you for the honor you do me. How I believe that a, a disciple such as yourself does not seem to need a master such as I. However, in the interest of better judgment, I still wish to ask you a few questions. Ajis, Arlequin, please withdraw. Either I am wrong, or you are not unknown to me. I, Lord? It is not without reason that I wanted to speak with you in secret. I have suspicions which require some clarification. Suspicions, my Lord? Your name is not Phocion. The one whose name you currently borrow is alive and in Athens. I received a letter from him recently. Phocion is a common name, Your my Your alias is the least of your deception. That attire is not yours either. Admit it, mademoiselle, I have seen you elsewhere. What you say is true, my oh, lord. Oh, you blush before me. Oh, my blush does me injustice. But I am not ashamed of the purpose behind my disguise. 
I see nothing in this for which you can, which you can applaud yourself. You've come to steal away my people Agis, to throw his heart into fatal turmoil. This game gives you plenty to blush about. Agis? The young boy who just left? That is your suspicion? Oh, no, I have not come to disturb the heart of Agis. For him, my disguise would not have been necessary. Well, had I wished for his attention, my eyes alone would have won him over. Oh, but I do not pursue him. The one I seek is difficult to surprise. Well, my charms are impotent before him, and so I hide them beneath this disguise. If you are not here for Ajith, then for whom have you come? Still, you mention Ajith. I am not here for Ajith. I repeat, I am not here for him. Do you want proof? Well, I shall spare my pride no longer. Will the one I love please offer me his hand? Here is mine. As you can see, Ajith is not here to take it. Then who is it for? I have just told you. Well, must I name you as well, Hermocrates? Me, mademoiselle? Oh, I see you are well taught. Oh, I am indeed, but I the object of heart, such as yours. Oh, please let me justify my confession. No, it is ridiculous for me to listen any further. I am not made to be loved. You attack a lonely and untamed soul, to whom love is foreign. My rudeness would put off your youth and your charms, and my heart can do nothing for oh, yours. Please let me explain, my lord. It is reason forbids me to hear more. But my virtue, which I have just compromised, demands it. Will I confess my love in order that you may help, help heal me? I wish to overcome this weakness in myself. Oh, Hermocrates, take away the shameful desire. <laughs> I implore you. Oh, oh. <laughs> These words are all the help I have. I do not want to love you. Let my indifference heal you, and may it end this conversation in which everything is poisonous for whomever partakes of it. Is this the courage? How is this how you respond to the courage it has taken me to explain my situation to you? Is this the celebrated wisdom of the wise Hermocrates? I am hardly that, mademoiselle. Well, I have heard men everywhere praise your name and glorify your knowledge. Now it is I who blush. Forgive me for praising that which I love. My name is Aspazi, and I've lived as mistress of myself in ignorance of love and contempt to avoid all efforts to inspire me to it. Oh, it is ridiculous for me to listen any further. I was on a solitary walk when I met you, walking alone. Well, I did not recognize you at first, but as I gazed on you, my heart began to whisper, Hermocrates. Well, I can endure this no longer. In the name of the virtue that you cherish, Aspazi, please shorten your speech. What is your purpose? I wish to restore my reason. It is most dear to me. But the care of guaranteeing mine must be more dear to me. As austere as I may seem, I do have eyes and you do have charms. I have charms, you say. Well, you see them. But are you afraid to feel them? I do not even want to expose myself to feeling them. Oh, you are afraid to fear them. You would fear to love me, Hermocrates, but you would love me. I cannot help but hope for it. You misunderstand me. Then let us withdraw and find Leontine. I wish to remain here for a few days, and after discussing with her, you can tell me what you have decided about my stay. Proceed, Aspazi. I will follow. Oh, oh. oh I was drowning in that conversation. Oh. Uh, Dimas, come here, Dimas. Come here. I charge you to follow the young scholar that just left here. Stay near to him and observe whether he seeks out Agis. If you wish to prove your worth to me, you will follow these instructions. No sooner requested than done. I will bring you his every word. I will dig up something of interest. I hear you, you rotten rutabaga. Come out. I've got a thorn to pick with you. Ever since these young scholars show up, you never talk to me anymore. You're always off whispering away with that little petal of a valet. I am only being civil, my friend, but I love you no less, though I ignore you. Oh, so it is civil to ignore old friends? Friendship, like wine, grows better with age, you know. What a tasteful comparison! Let us drink to that later. On me! <laughs> On you? Since when has it been raining money? Do not concern yourself about that. You may be deep in dung, but I am no fool. 
Since when am I in the dark? <laughs> Since I saw you counting money earlier. I do not know where it is coming from, but I will tell you the master is in a state. Why? Did he see me counting also? Worse. He suspects some maneuvering and has put me on the scent like a slinking vine. He wants me to weave around our guests and report their intentions back to him. Be careful, my good vine. <laughs> Why? I have no reason to keep secrets from the master. So you know who they are? From root to flower. Oh, I thought it was only me that knew them. <laughs> you? Oh, no, no. They are too sly for you. Oh, look here, you old rake. They told me themselves. What? That they are women. Women? Didn't you know that? <laughs> no. <laughs> but I do now. <laughs> oh, this is rare. Why, you speak? Ah. You tricked me. Ah, I'm an ass. <laughs> oh, what fun. This is the stuff of blackmail. So... Are you fond of money, dirt digger? I would be a fool if I were not, but uh, where is the money buried? <clears throat> I can make the Mademoiselle finance my blunder, I promise you. It will not come cheap, I warn you. It, how much have you received from the Mademoiselle thus far? She gave me 20 gold leave! 20 gold leave? <laughs> Excellent, uh, Mademoiselle! But uh... Why does she come here just as a man? While out walking, she saw Agis and lost her heart to him. She's disguised herself to steal her way into his heart while he's unaware. Very good. This all means income for me, but uh, what of the little valet, Amridas? Another heart I hope to take for myself. Oh, but uh, look out for, here they come. Oh, I'm really in the dung now. I cannot speak with him now, he's talking with the gardener. They dare not approach. Tell them I know all about them. I beg you not to be angry with me, mademoiselle, but I have been indiscreet. To whom do you speak, Arlequin? Alas, there is no more mystery. He made me talk. And you told him who I was? Every detail. Oh, heavens. I know that Agis has captured your heart, and you're trying to capture his. I also know about the money, and I'm wondering how much of it I will receive. Well, that is an end to our plans, Karine. No, do not be discouraged, mistress, for our plans need helpers to carry it out. Now we only need one of the gardener, correct, Amos? I am of the same opinion, mademoiselle. Well, what do you want? To be paid what I am worth. <laughs> he is not worth a ducat. <laughs> Here, oh. my friend, is the beginning of what you will receive if you are silent. You will someday thank heaven for having been associated with this adventure. You are luckier than you can imagine. I am sold. And I am ruined. For if I had held my tongue, all that money would land in my own pocket. It is out of my money that this mulch man is bought. Suffice that I will make you both rich. Earlier, Immocrates promised to let me stay, but I fear he has changed his mind, for he is currently debating with Leontine and Agis about me, both of whom want me to stay. <laughs> Tell me the truth, Arlequin. Did you let slip about my purpose with Agis? Do not hide anything from me. No, by my faith, beautiful mademoiselle. It was only this dirt digger who caught me in his rake. It is hardly my fault you cannot keep your mouth shut. If you have said nothing, then I fear nothing. Karine will tell you my success thus far with the philosopher, and now that you are with us, Demos, she will divide the next tasks between the both of you. It is now a matter of persuading the dispositions of both brother and sister. We will succeed, fear not. I see Agis. Withdraw, all of you, and take care that Hermocrates does not find us all together. I was looking for you, Faucion. I'm worried and terribly angry with Hermocrates. He has never displeased me before, but now he presents the most unreasonable arguments as to why you should not be allowed to stay. Lady has done everything in her power to convince him otherwise, and I have no idea how this will turn out. 
Dear Focion, please, urge him again, and I will speak to him myself. Perhaps between us we can defeat him. Does this mean you want me to stay as well? This is the first time I've tasted the charm of friendship. You have the first feelings of my heart. Please, do not teach me the pain of losing a friend. Remember when you told me that it would be my choice if I wished to continue seeing you? Well, that is my wish. Life would be nothing but boredom without you here. Does your heart feel as mine, dear friend? More than I can say. For reasons I cannot confide, I am unable to leave this place. While you, Focion, are master of your destiny, I ask only that you promise to stay near me until I can determine my own fate. Yes! I, I promise you. After what you have just said, I only want to be where you are. I was unhappy. I was born to misfortune. But your friendship is the signal of happiness that may be in store for me. Ajis, there is one thing that worries me. Well, amidst the pleasure of our friendship, love may intervene and alter such tender feelings. <laughs> a friend does not stand well against a mistress. I? Love like that? <laughs> Never! May heaven make your soul as inaccessible to it as mine. My upbringing, sentiments, and reason have all closed my heart to romantic love. I dislike everything about the opposite sex that draws me in. Uh, attachment to women is despised by you, Ajis? I hate the idea and will run from it all my life. Well, this changes everything. Lord, we have promised to stay near you. But I can no longer do so, for someday you might reproach me if I did not. I have no wish to deceive you, and thus graciously return the friendship you have bestowed on me. Where does this sudden change come from? How have I displeased you? You have not displeased me, my lord. You fear what it is like to lose a friend, but soon I shall experience it. Me stop being your friend. You are still mine, lord, but I am no longer yours. Sadly, I am one of those objects which you despise. What? My clothing deceives you. It hides from you an unfortunate mademoiselle who has escaped the persecution of her father. My name is Aspazi. I was born of an illustrious family, of which I am the last. Well, my father wished to marry me to a man I detest, and Princess Leonid agreed. My only recourse was to disguise myself and escape. I had heard of Hermocrates and his retreat. So I disguised myself to gain admittance here without making myself known to try and take refuge. But then I met you, and you offered me friendship. I am astonished. I must take leave of here. Hermocrates wishes me to withdraw, and you feel such a hatred towards me that it causes me pain. Well, I shall go elsewhere and seek those who may offer me refuge. Uh, please, stop, Aspazi. You are in a piteous state, and though I consider women dangerous, I would reproach myself if I did not offer you help. Your misfortunes oblige me to urge Democritus to consent to your stay. Oh, but you detest me. You have made that plain. Oh, perhaps I should just return to the Princess Leonid and marry the man she has chosen for me. I would not advise it, for in marriage the heart and hand should follow each other. I have always heard that the saddest of fates is to be united with one you do not love. In truth, I am much like you. Thus far, I have only felt my heart quickened by your offer of friendship. And if you do not withdraw yours from me, I would never want any other feeling than that. Then please, do not return to the princess, for I feel the same. So you still wish for me to stay? Uh, always, mademoiselle. Especially that there is nothing to fear. It is only a, qu a question of friendship between us. The only inclination that I can inspire and the one that you are capable of. Uh, you are so suited to being called friend, though you are more suited to be called lover, but that is not for me to say. I wish to never become one. So, let's leave love there. It is dangerous to talk about it. I believe a servant is looking for you. Hermocrates may no longer be busy, so I will go and search for him. <clears throat> Mademoiselle Pension, your interview had two spies. We've not seen Hermocrates, but Leontine is searching for you and has asked the master's sister. She seemed a little sad. Apparently the philosopher did not surrender. Well, no matter how hard he tries, he will not be able to resist my charms. <laughs> and perhaps Lord Agis will help your cause. Well, one or two more conversations and I will triumph. 
Are you so certain? The gods of love are already announcing my reward. <laughs> May they reward me as well. Peace, you rogue. <laughs> <laughs> I see Leontine approaching. Let us withdraw. Are you both clear on your instructions? We are, Lord Fauchion. I have been practicing, and you shall be most impressed with my charm. <laughs> <laughs> Leontine, I have heard that Hermocrates is resisting my stay, and I am greatly distressed. Yes, Phocion, Hermocrates refuses to keep his word with unfounded stubbornness. I know you are going to urge me to press him further, but I will do nothing of the kind. His refusal has brought me back to my senses. And what of my senses? My love for you is boundless, and yet you cast me aside. Where do you expect me to find the strength to leave you? I call on your virtue. Let that be the judge between us. You know I love you. I'm imbued with the most tender passions. Both ask me for my life, tear my heart apart. But, Leontine, do not ask me to do the impossible by leaving you. What vivid postulations. No, no, Phocion, I have never felt more strongly the need for your departure, and I will no longer interfere with it. Your impetuous heart is no match for mine, and I cannot compete with your passionate expressions. You do not wish me to feel pain and confusion in loving you, but that is what I feel, so I beseech you, withdraw and leave me in my wretched state. Please, spare me, Leontine. I cannot bear the mere thought of leaving. I can no longer live without you. Oh, I will fill these places in, in my body with my despair. <laughs> I don't know where I am anymore. <laughs> oh. Because you are in despair, I must love you. What oh. is this tyranny? If you hate me. I should. Well, then is your heart favorable towards me? I do not wish to listen to my heart. Oh, Leontine. Stop. Someone approaches. <laughs> servant doing here, madame? My master, Hermocrates, has asked me to keep an eye on you. He does not trust you. When I am with madame, my conduct bears no reproach. Leontine, please ask Garlican to withdraw. Perhaps it is better I should withdraw. If you leave oh. without promising to speak on behalf of me, I am no longer answerable for my reason. You need not stay, Arlequin. Indeed, I must, madame. For you do not know whom you are dealing with here. This gentleman is not so fond of wisdom as of women. He seeks to alter your reason. What do you mean, Arlequin? Oh, what a ninny you are. Listen, madame. His valet, another sly creature, came to me and asked, is there a way for us to be friends? Oh, with all my heart, says I. So you are happy here. You have honest masters, says he. They are admirable, says I. How kind your mistress is, says he. Tell me, does she have any lovers? Oh, says I, as many as she wants, which was the truth. Then he asks, does she wish to marry? And I reply, she does not tell me her wishes. Then a tirade of questions spilled forth. Who comes to see her? Who does not come? Does she remain a maiden? Does your master support this? Is he in love himself? And on and on. Be still, I demand. Then he loses his temper. He says, we stay here only that my master may have her heart so that she may marry him. We have no need of wealth, for we have more than is needed for ten households. Have you not said enough? See how he cares. He will give you the supplement if you want. Lord Phocion, tell him that Amitas was only joking. <sighs> he cannot answer. He knows I relay the truth. Your heart is being threatened as we speak, madame. I will fetch 
Yes, Lord Ambocrates, to your aid. Stop, Arlequin. I do not want him to know that we were making love. What? I, I mean that I have been breached. What? My vocabulary has been breached that we were speaking of love. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, if this rogue is a friend of yours, then I need not shout thief. <laughs> How easily reason accommodates itself. Do not forget the discretion of your faithful servant, all akin, madame, who wishes you well and then shuts his mouth. <laughs> Go, I will pay for your silence at another time. See what you are exposing me to? What is happening to me? <laughs> Here is the painting you requested, my lord. But it would have been fine if I could have painted it from life, the likeness from life. Why do you present this in front of my lady? Ah, yes, you have captured the face, the fine and noble air, and the lively eyes. But it seems that the eyes in life are finer than this. Hmm. Is that a portrait you're speaking about? Oh, yes, madame. I will continue working on it, my lord. May I see it before you go? Oh, it is not yet finished, madame. I see. Well, I will not insist. Oh, here it is, madame. <laughs> it is of me. I never want to lose sight of you. Even the mere thought of leaving you is painful for me. So this portrait gives me comfort. Well, does it inspire you a little? It should not, but I am no longer in control. What if I should say, I love you? There is no if. Tell me that you do. I do. It is the truth. Oh, you fill me with joy, Leontine. I will wait while you speak with Hermocrates. I see it's a must coming. Oh, I am full of emotion. I cannot bear to be seen. I must compose myself. Farewell, Fosion, and do not worry. I will seek my brother's consent. <laughs> The philosopher is coming this way, walking as if in a dream. Leave me the terrain, and I will transplant him to your purpose. Courage, Demos. We will withdraw and return when he is gone. Demos, have you been observing Faustion? Uh, yes, and I was on my way to report to you. Well, well, have you seen him do anything? Is he often with Ajis? Uh, no, no, no. He has other things, uh, uh, people to attend to. What do you mean? Well, I mean, you are a man of merit, a wise man who merits praise, and you are good looking. What? What are you blathering about? <laughs> well, I hear all these sighs and dying for love. I love him so much, this dear man, this agreeable man. You make no sense. Well, there are sighs from you, and then sighs from a man who is a woman. Who? Faucion. Only her clothing resembles a man. The rest of her is woman. <laughs> what? Oh, and she what? is most charming. They say she is saving her charms for the greatest of all mortal men, the one they call Hermocrates. Me? I heard them as I was hiding behind some bushes. I love him so much, this man, she says to her valet, who is, by the way, a woman in pants as she is, all sly and wheedling. I do not know what to do or say. And her valet responds, patience, mademoiselle. To which she says, but where is he? What is he doing? I need his wisdom. Stop, Dimas. I am almost finished. Her valet replies to her, but what does he say to you? Well, he scolds me and says, but what of your virtue, mademoiselle? But what of my torments? Don't they go hand in hand? Enough, Dimas, enough. If you wished my advice, master, you could cure her by absorbing her illness and marrying her. Remaining a bachelor cuts off the roots of lineage, and it would be a shame to cut yours off. Besides, you could recommend me to the affections of her maid, for I am a man who wishes to... Sow his seeds. Oh, this is all I need. Dimas, I order you to keep this quiet. It would be unfortunate for the person in question if this adventure were known. For my part, I intend to put things in order by sending her back. Oh. Well, Dimas, what does he think? 
He does not know what to think. He has lost all but an ounce of his philosophy. Well, he will soon lose that as well. Well, I used a portrait to put over the sister, and I have another to use on the brother. Ajis, however, avoids me. Well, I've hardly seen him since he knew I was a woman. Perhaps he's looking for me? Uh, remember, mademoiselle, you promised my fortune would be made at the end of this history. You can count it done. <laughs> Merci to you. Good evening! How are you enjoying the gardens thus far? Excellent! We will now be taking a brief 15 minute intermission. Feel free to get up and stretch your legs. Just remember that masks are required inside and we ask you not to tromp on the gardens or touch the topiaries. Until next time, au revoir! Do you run from me, asked Pazzi. Earlier, I thought you were fleeing me. Yes, something was troubling me, and it still is. What is it? There is a person I love, but I cannot distinguish between the love of friendship and romantic love. Would you teach me? Do I know this person of whom you speak? Well, you know that before you arrived, I had no friend. And since I arrived, you have only seen me, so I can conclude? That yes, it is you, asked Pazzi. So can you tell me what this feeling is? I do not know, for I think I am in the same place for someone I love. For whom? Can you not conclude? It is true that you had not yet loved when you arrived. Since that time, you have only seen me. So it is for me that your heart feels this confusion, Aspazi? Yes, but that does not help our predicament. We loved each other before. Do we love each other the same way or differently now? That is what we must decide. Tell me, did you avoid me because your heart was troubled with feelings you did not dare confess to me? Yes, that is the truth of it. Well, come, come then. It is love. There is no need to ponder it further. I would lay down my life for you. I would give a thousand lives if I had them. Here is the proof. Love in expression, in looks, in feelings. Love if there ever was love. But perhaps love as it is not. I've told you what is in my heart. May I know what is going on in yours? Gently, Agis. Women talk of friendship as much as we do life, but love? Never. Besides, you are already too embarrassed by your own feelings. If I told you what was in my heart, it would be even worse for you. Your eyes tell me that you are not insensitive. I do not speak for my eyes. They may very well tell you that I love you, but I will not reproach myself for having told you so with my lips. That speech throws me into an abyss of passion. <laughs> Your feelings must be like mine. Oh, yes, it is true. You guessed it, and it is not my fault. <laughs> but it's about more than loving. You must have the freedom to express it. And Lord Hermocrates, who governs you. I do respect him. But already I feel that hearts can have no master. Still, I must speak to him before he speaks to you, because he may well send you back today, and we need some time to decide what to do. Tala, tala, ra! Someone approaches. Let us meet again soon, for I still have much to tell you. I leave you, Fuzzy. I will work to convince Armacrates to consent to your stay. Go! I fear someone will suspect me if you do not leave. Au revoir! He left just time for... Here comes his rival. <laughs> There you are! I've grown sadder in your absence, but no less tender. Oh, various things have held me back, Aspazi. Your stay here is no longer a question of inclination. It would be madness for you to remain. Mas knows who you are, and he's overheard the secrets of your heart. Your reputation is at stake, and you must withdraw. But what are you sending me back to? A thousand times more troubles than I had before. For what virtuous help did I receive from the wise Hermocrates? You thought me wise and have loved me for that reason, but I am not. A truly wise man would hold himself responsible for your peace of heart, but I am sending you away for selfish reasons. I fear that your secret will come out and damage my reputation. This means I am sacrificing you on the altar of my own fears. And this is the wise man that you love. Huh. 
You say you are not wise, yet give sublime proof to the contrary. You only increase my feelings toward you by exposing your own. Did you think that I was unsusceptible to all the havoc that love wreaks on the hearts of ordinary men? No, no, I have felt more words, more jealousy, more passion. All of these things have agitated me in turn. Do you recognize the wise Hermocrates in this man before you? The universe is full of men who resemble me now. Announce this love you feel. Love that any man, taken at random, deserves as much as I do. Oh, never was Hermocrates more deserving of my love. And by this, you guarantee your love for me. Oh! Stop! I have but one more thing to say to you, and it will end there. I do not know. I will reveal your secret. I will dishonor myself, and my affront will reflect upon you if you do not leave. Then I will leave secure in my vengeance. Since you love me, may it fester in your heart. Enjoy your wild wisdom and cruel cunning at the expense of a young heart whom you have deceived, whose trust you have betrayed, whose virtuous intentions you have not respected, which is only served as a victim to the ferocity of your opinions. Oh, hush, mademoiselle, I hear someone approaching. You break my heart and now ask me to be silent? <laughs> <laughs> What is all this noise? A mischievous affair, one only these two scholars know about. Explain yourself. I found this youngster in the posture of an artist. I noticed the palette with various paints he was dipping a feather into. I approached silently to observe the painting and saw a face. And that face was yours, my lord. Mine? Yes, yours. Except for a few alterations. Your own nose takes up more space on your face than the one shown here. <laughs> Is it permissible to make changes of that nature in a portrait? Give me that! I suggest you paint the missing two-thirds of your face. Quiet, you imbecile. You may go. What does this mean? Why have you painted me? I wish to paint an illustrious man and to share my skill with others. You are doing me too much credit. And I knew that this portrait would please a certain person. Hush! What, what does this mean, Aspazi? Have you a secret to tell me? Oh, let us ignore it. You are making me blush. Oh. My own composure is slipping away. How could you allow Arlequin to expose me like this? I am most embarrassed. You have triumphed, Aspazi. You win. I surrender. Keep this portrait. It belongs to you. No! I will not take it unless your heart abandons it to me. I will not prevent you from having it. Then you must have mine. Do you find me humiliated enough? I will not argue with you any longer. Oh, there is still something missing. If the Lord Aramarchus wishes me to finish the portrait, it will only take a moment. Oh, since we are alone, and it is only a moment, let us finish. Oh, I suppose you please do not expose me to this risk. Someone could surprise us. Oh, but it is my moment of triumph. Let us not waste its precious nature. Your eyes look on me with the tenderness I would like to preserve in your portrait. Please allow us to finish. You turn a little to the side, Lord, please. Oh, heavens, what have you reduced me to? Raise your chin a little. Must I, Aspazi? Oh, you must. Now turn a little to the side. <laughs> oh, please stop as she approaches. Oh, let us withdraw. <sighs> I have come to plead with you. Please stay, Focion. Well, I did not know that you were already so charmed by one another. You wish him to stay as well? Our time together has not been frequent, and one cannot know Focion without esteeming him, and friendship easily follows esteem. But perhaps as I am interrupting your conversation, I will withdraw. What is this sudden eagerness in Ajis? I've never seen him so interested in anything as he is in you. Does he know who you truly are? Have you deceived uh -huh. me? Ah, Lord! You know me with joy. You've just revealed you are jealous. Well, I will meet with the Jeez. He has not gone far, and you will see whether I merit your suspicions. No, d do not call him. Your frankness reassures me. Well, I surrender. No one must know that I love you. Not yet. Give me time to oh, think. I agree, and I forgive you. But here comes Leontine. 
I shall leave you a moment alone together. Oh, may the heavens forgive my artifice. Ah, oh, here you are, dear brother. I've been looking for you everywhere. What do you want, Leontine? Where do you stand with Focion? Do you still intend to send him back? He has shown so much esteem for you and spoken so highly of you that I promised you could stay and that you would consent to it. I have given him my word, so do not try to change my mind. No, Leontine, you know my respect for you, and as you have promised him, he may stay if you wish. Oh. Oh, I do. Thank you, dear brother, for your complacency. And in truth, Fosion deserves the favor. <laughs> Besides, it will be nice for Regis to have a friend. It is not good for one to be alone at his age. Or at any age. You are right. There are moments of sadness when I miss having company. If I have the courage to say so, I get tired of being alone. What do you mean by courage? Are we not born to be sociable? Are, is it not natural to be so? Perhaps we were too hasty when we decided on such a harsh, retired life. Perhaps? After all, the disease is not without a cure. Fortunately, we can change our minds. That is all very well for you to say. You are kinder, younger, and lovelier than I. Dearest brother, few young men can compare with you. The, the gift of your heart would not be rejected. A man at your age would be welcome anywhere, should he wish to change his state. I, I assure you, dear sister, the same would be true of yours. So you would not be surprised if I had some plans? I have always been surprised that you did not. <laughs> but why shouldn't you have some as well? Perhaps I will. Who knows? <laughs> After all, who are we to question the institution of marriage? Think on this, and later we will discuss it further. Farewell. <laughs> as far as I can see, we are both in a good state. I wonder who she is interested in. Perhaps someone as young as Aspazi. Oh, well, how weak we are. But one must fulfill one's destiny. I believe success will be mine. Well, Hermocrates and Leontine are both so enamored with <laughs> Fossior and Aspazie. They both want to marry me. Who would think such wise philosophers could be led astray so easily? Well, now I need to meet in secret with Agis. He loves me as Aspazie, of this I'm certain. But will he love me as Princess Leonid? I see no reason why he should not. After all, Princess Leonid has uh, done as much for him and will continue to do more. But his family perished because of mine, and he holds me responsible. That was through no fault of your own. Your father inherited the throne. He didn't usurp it. I am both full of love and fear. Still, I must uh, appear confident. Uh, was my letter delivered to the castle? I sent it with a messenger, and you should soon receive news. I noticed his address to Lord Ariston. Will you tell me what order it contained? I asked him to return here with a few guards, my coach, and our things. <laughs> well, I want Agis to leave these grounds as prince of his country. Go to the gate, Corinne, and warn me as soon as Ariston has arrived. You've been a good servant and a dear friend. For that, I thank you. Go now, and let us bring all of this to a happy conclusion. I leave you, but you are not alone, for here comes Leontine searching for you. Fosion! Oh, here you are, Fosion. I have news. Our fate is cast, and soon our troubles will end. Thanks to heaven. We shall soon be united forever. And although I know the wedding cannot take place here, I fear your plan to depart together in your carriage is not respectable. Would it not be better, dearest, for me to go first and wait for you in the city? You are quite right! <laughs> I will go prepare myself to leave within the hour, but Fosion, please hurry and follow. The sooner you go, the sooner I will follow. You are the only one in the world who could convince me to do this. Our love is innocent, and you are not at risk, so you must go now and prepare yourself. I love your eagerness. May it last forever. And may you imitate it with yours, for I am growing impatient with your slowness. 
<laughs> now you bring me joy. But here comes my brother, who I'd rather not see. Goodbye, my love. Oh. Hermocrates again. Will this never end? Hermocrates, there you are. But oh. I thought you were busy preparing to depart. Oh, charming Aspazi, if only you knew how much I was struggling. If only you knew how weary I am of your struggles. Forgive the agitations of my heart. I'm trying to be strong. Oh, never mind your agitations and focus on leaving. <sighs> that sigh is not helping you go. I have something to tell you, but it does embarrass me. With you, there is always one more thing. What is it? I can hide nothing from you. I have been raising Ajif since he was very young. But now I must ask you to allow him to live with us for a time after we are married. You have heard of King Cleomenes. Ajis is his son, who was taken from the prison as a child. This secret must not fall into the ears of Princess Leonida, as she wishes only for his death. Oh, your confidence is in good hands. But I have always heard that the Princess Leonid is fair and generous. I do not trust her. She is born of a blood that is neither. I also heard that she would marry Agis if she could find him. Well, they are of the same age. Even if she were to find him, the hatred he bears her would prevent their marriage. Well, is not the glory of forgiving one's enemies worthy of the honor of hating them? Especially those enemies who are innocent of the crime committed? If the throne were not at stake, I might agree. But in any case, Agis will soon leave us. Our friends prepare now to fight the princess, and he will be joining us. Fight her? Why? Did they plan to kill her? No, no. That would only be, be to avenge one crime with another. Though they do plan to take her throne, and they, as she is the, the, the descendant of guilty men, they will imprison her. I see. Do you have anything else to tell me before you depart? No, I have unburdened my heart and can now prepare to leave. Oh! oh. Ooh, so shy. <laughs> Farewell, sweet Alfazi. I shall soon see you in the city. And now he prepares to fight me. Oh, heavens. I'm certain that Jesus is waiting for the right moment to speak with me as Aspazi. But the hatred he bears for me as Princess Leonie is frightening. I need a moment alone to think. And I'm not going to get it. Your servant, mademoiselle. And I salute you, mademoiselle. Shh, not so loud. Well, can you please hurry it up? I need to move. Have we done a good job for you? Yes, you have both served me well. And your plan is advancing. Yes, but I must meet with Ajis to make conclusion. He awaits me. Oh, good, since he is already waiting, we need not hurry. Let's talk business. We have undertaken a dangerous task. There are no scoundrels as stealthy as us. We are beyond God. compare. We have wrestled with our consciences, which is meritoriously difficult. After all, sometimes you are a man. Other times, a woman. First you loved this one, then that one, but we have helped you capture everyone's heart. Our assistance has been invaluable. What do you want? Your escapade is coming to an end. What will you give us for the finale? What do you mean? I'm growing impatient. Just this. Purchase the rest of the adventure now. We'll sell it at a reasonable price. In other words, Continue to work with us, or we'll spoil everything. Did I not give you my word that I would secure your fortune by the end of this? We would prefer your word in cash. Yes, because when scoundrels are no longer needed, they get paid badly. You are most insolent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Yes, we agree with you. We are insolent. <laughs> You are annoying me, and thus here is my answer. Well, if you harm me, if you are not discreet, I will make you atone for your indiscretion in a dungeon. You do not know who I really am, but I warn you that I have the power to do so. If, on the other hand, you remain silent, I will keep the promise I made to you. Choose. For now, I order you to withdraw and repair your insolence by prompt obedience. Shall we continue with insolence? I suggest we leave. Dungeons are bad for one's health. <laughs> well, that intimidated them. 
But last, here comes the G's. So I have found you, Austin, can speak freely to you for a moment. I've suffered such jealousy. I've almost hated Hermocrates and Leontine for the friendship they have shown you. But who wouldn't love you? You are so lovely and kind, Aspazi, and how sweet it is to love you. Oh, how I delight in hearing you say that, Agis. But tell me, is this tenderness something that can stand the test? Can it not be stolen from me? No. I would give my life for you. <laughs> you do not really know me yet, Agis. I know your charms. I know the sweet feelings of your soul. It is enough to adore you my whole life. Nothing can pull me away from you. But precious love, the, the dearer it is to me, the more I fear losing it. My birthright may repel you. You do not know my birthright either. I fear combining my fates with yours. Cruel princess, I have so many reasons to hate her. Princess Leonid? She is my enemy and yours. But who comes? Oh, it is Hermocrates again. Agis, my destiny with you depends on a few words. You hate me, but you do not yet know me. Me? Hate you? Not know you? I cannot explain now. I'll return when he is gone. Now, Agis, I must speak with you. Though I am ashamed to say this. Why? What is the matter? That which you might have never imagined. I must confess that I am weak as any other man. You know what I thought of the passion called love? Well, sometimes it seemed that you were exaggerating a little bit about that. Yes, it may well be, but what did you expect? A loner who meditates, who studies, who trades only with his mind and never with his heart, is hardly able to pass judgment on some things. He always goes too far. Yes, you have often gone too far. You are right. My name passion is mad, extravagant, unworthy of a reasonable soul. But I did not know what I was saying. No. This was neither to consult reason nor nature. This was to criticize the sky itself. Yes. For in the end, we are all made to love. And in the end, love may one day take revenge on the contempt you have held it in. Oh, you are threatening me too late. Already I am being punished. What? Get ready to see me change my state and follow me if you love me. I am leaving today and getting married. Is this why you were ashamed? It is not pleasant to be faced with one's folly. I congratulate you. You have finally come to know your heart. I have learned well enough. If you knew with what excess of love and industry of passion my lady surprised me, you would not wonder that my heart surrendered. My lady met me in the forest and took a liking to me. She tried to stop her love of me, but couldn't. Intimidated by my reputation, she disguised herself as a man to get close to me. First, I wanted her to leave. I even thought that it was you that she was after. But my lady swore her love to me with a passion that would have tamed the wildest of men. But, Lord, have I seen this tender lover who disguises herself? She is here. But I've only seen Faucion. That is she. But don't say a word, for here comes Leontine. Well, why did Aspasi deceive me? I am here, dearest brother, to tell you that I am leaving for the city to visit my friend... Frozen. Then we shall both be absent. I leave within the hour to visit my friend Crichton in the city as well. It is quite peculiar that we are both leaving for the city. Does your trip hide some mystery? That is a question I might also ask you. Remember the speech you gave me earlier? Hermocrates, let us speak openly as before. I do not go to see Frozen. It is my heart that takes me where I am going. Then I shall be no less frank. I do not go to see my friend Crichton. It is also my heart that decides where I am to go. Oh, Hermocrates, I am getting married. So am I, Leontine. Well, this is such good news. Since you know all, I no longer need to leave to disguise my marriage. We may be married in this garden, for the one I love is here. And for these same reasons, I do not need to leave either. We may be married at the same time, for the one to whom I give myself is here as well. It is Faucion that I marry. Faucion. Yes, Faucion. The same Faucion that you were speaking with earlier. The same. But I am to marry him. <laughs> what are you saying? Have you lost your wits? Faucion loves me. He gave me his portrait. Your portrait? 
The portrait was mine, and he gave it to me. Here is mine. And here is the double. Yours is a man, and mine is as a woman, and that is the only difference. Her name is Aspazi. Oh, heavens. I can endure this no longer. She, yes, she, Leon. She has not given me a portrait, but I am to marry Aspazi as well. I am outraged. <laughs> I fear some hidden plan in this. Let us waste no time, Leontine. This mademoiselle must answer for herself and her deception. I am in despair. So they have finally left us alone. What is wrong, Gis? Why won't you look at me? So, which of the three of us should marry you? Hermocrates, Leontine, or myself? I see I have been revealed. Don't you have a portrait for me, like you gave the others? The others would not have had a portrait at all, and I had not intended to give you myself in person. And I give that person to Hermocrates? Farewell, oh, cruel stop, traitor. Stop, Agis, listen to me. Please, just leave. No! I will not leave. And you are the most ungrateful of all men if you do not listen to me. I, ungrateful whom you have deceived? It is for you that I deceived everyone. I could not do so otherwise. All my artifices are testimonies of my love, and you insult the most tender heart there ever was. You will love me, you will value me, and you will ask me for forgiveness. I do not understand. I used everything to abuse the heart whose tenderness was the only way I had left to obtain yours. You were the sole object of all I was doing. How can you expect to believe you, Aspazi? The boss and Oilikin! No of my plans that have served me will confirm to you what I say. Ask them. I love you with all my heart, Agis. Is what you are telling me possible, Aspazi? Can we be happy together? There is still the matter of this princess who you call our enemy. She may one day turn the love you have for me into grief. She wishes to kill me, as I am Cleomenes' son. I know this. But I can convince her to alter your destiny. I ask nothing of her but that she let us live our lives in peace. And that she will allow if that is what you choose. But how can you confirm this? What power over her do you wield? Wait here for me a while. Soon everything will be clear. What? Where are you going? Ugh. I must find Hermocrates and Leontine and try to explain this to them with some measure of empathy. coming no one going hmm. that is most unusual for this garden mm -hmm. typically there's an important reason to come or go ah well it is rare that I get to be here alone by myself I cannot speak for you but I can certainly speak for me when I tell you I enjoy my own company it is pleasant serene peaceful and boring <laughs> oh perhaps if i elaborate on my vast personality and talents i will be entertained let us see i am witty <laughs> sly robust vigorous resilient <laughs> uh, charming. Humorous. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, lusty. <laughs> Eager. Oh, mademoiselle. Monsieur. Oh. And easy to please. Oh, I am also adept at acrobatics. Permit me to show you. Hey, ooh. Whoop! 
Disappointed in myself. One cannot exceed at everything. Ta da! <laughs> oh, but there is something I've forgotten. Above all my talents, I am best known for being a most excellent lover. <laughs> I escorted that sweet little valet, Ermidas around the garden and showed her all the best places to... Well, never mind. Well, that's none of your business. Oh, it seems I must go as someone's coming after all. Au revoir! I've tried my best, and still they don't believe me. Aunt Fuzzy must clear this up herself. Was he? I am the Princess Leonid. Princess? <laughs> yes. And now you, as prince, are free to choose your own destiny. My heart sets yours free. Words cannot express the fullness of my heart. Well, then we shall be silent together, for my heart is just as full. What is this, a gif on his knees? And who are you, madame? I am the Princess Leonie, also recently known as Fosion and Aspazi. What is the meaning of this treachery? And what are these portraits? Explain yourself. Oh, the portraits are from me. Well, I have yours. Would you like it in return? This is no joke. Why have you come here, deceitful as you are? I will explain everything to you. Oh, but here come your servants. We are all undone! There is a company of soldiers at the gates! Shall we carry us off to the dungeon? Please, we've done everything you've asked of us, Your Majesty! We have not spoiled your plan! Please have mercy on us! I have a cough! <laughs> and would not do well in a damp place! Oh! No, nor I, for I have the gout! Oh, I felt it begin just now! Fear not, my friends. Rise. Well, no one has come for you. <laughs> How is it they have served you instead of us? Princess though you are, we deserve an explanation. Democrates and Leontine, my object in coming here was to return the throne to Agis and to become his. Well, under my own name and dress, I might have, he might have rejected me. So I came here, disguised the men, and abused your emotions. For that I am truly sorry. Democrates, I leave your heart in the hands of your reason. Leontine, I hope you can come to appreciate the knowledge that you can love and be loved in time. <laughs> Your Highness, Ariston has arrived at the gate with your carriage and your guard. I can revel in this revelation. <laughs> come, my lord. It's time to leave and receive the tributes of your subjects. Your carriage and guards await you. Let us enjoy the triumph of love.